Welcome, dear readers, to Cover My Ass, where baffling books are reviewed but not read by yours truly. My name is Kaki. And I'm Kay. And remember, we only judge a book by its cover. Good one on missing my cue there. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, things are a bit confusing today. We're not meeting in our, in our usual spot, but maybe we should tell the, uh, the readers at home what we'll be reviewing today. Ah, yes. Today's book is The Gods Hate Kansas by <laughs> Joseph Millard. <laughs> yeah, I've been looking forward to this one for a while. I've been eyeing it among the towering stacks of your, of your library where we are. Last week, I introduced you to the vehicle that I intended mm-hmm. to be using on my quest to find the, the library. The Regal, or what? Yes, yes, yes. The Beagle 3, the H- named after the HMS Beagle, uh, uh, shortened to the, the Threegal. Um, and now, unfortunately, I, mm, I really like that name. So when I changed my mind and sort of demolished the ship and, and built a new one, like, I wouldn't call it the, the Beagle 4. So Forkle? Yeah, that doesn't... So I'm calling it the Threegal 2. What's worse... Oh, no, okay. it gets worse. Yeah? I made three of them. So I, I figured that okay. one big, like... Multifibian craft was, mm-hmm. was just too big to fit through the, the library. So uh, I'm just curious, how are you planning on piloting all three of them at the same time? Voltron technology. They are launchable from one another. They, mm-hmm. they, they combine to make a, a sort of an outrigger canoe. Yeah. Where the, the essentially sort of mountain bike component serves as the, as the counterweight. Yeah. When you're voyaging on the, uh, on the sea, but also like the, the, the canoe fits on the, uh, on the back of a trailer. So we have, we have three components, A, B, and C. The canoe that I mentioned, I'm calling mm-hmm. that one A. Tentatively, even yeah. though I don't think that I'll be doing much upriver rafting in your no, library. Not uh, many rivers. No, no. I mean, just the duck pond. The, yes, the duck massacre memorial pond. Just catching all the readers <laughs> up on the unnecessary lore that sprung up about this literary podcast. We have the mountain bike like thing, which has a bit more traction, obviously, being Dutch individuals. We know our bikes. Yes. Oh, where did you find the tires? Mm, that is the one I need help with. Oh. Like, so the, the, the three goal two B is still WIP, work in progress. Oh, okay. I was getting nervous there. But nervous, why? Things might have been out of control. I mean, like, suddenly <laughs> rubber factory <laughs> productions. Why, why and, would that uh, ever? Uh, oh, yes, is that an option? Well, no. Are we sure? I don't, we I sure don't have any rubber it's... trees in here. Not even in the atrium. Ah, yes, the atrium. I guess that's maybe the first thing that I need to explore. There's no rubber trees there, so don't worry uh, about it. Yeah, but there might be a clever substitute. You know how there's very often a clever substitute when you're... In your case, you're... substitute. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I, I appreciate the vote of confidence. <laughs> Speaking of confidence, I'm I'm most proud of the 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 three goal two C. Yes, which is an ultralight aircraft. Now this one, I am one hundred percent convinced. I haven't tested it yet, but yes. one hundred percent convinced it'll be a great success. What, what what what's this material that you used for the wing? Feathers. Feathers. Yes. Yes. Okay. The Liberaptor feathers, sort okay. of taped together. Mm-hmm. So I figure. I mean, they were figuring out how to fly. Yes. It must have been the feathers. So this yes. is probably going to go great. Let's go I'll with it. I've got an interesting old story from Greek mythology here somewhere. You might want to read that first. Mm. (laughs) Yes. Mm. You wouldn't have to use wax to get the... You said tape, but I don't think that... I did notice that the scotch tape budget had gone up. I mean... I just thought that it just shows up in the drawers again. Well, yes, but the gnomes bill it to my Staples account. I thought we said scotch tape, not Staples. (sighs) Yeah, yeah. Quality jokes with khaki. I don't care where they buy it. <laughs> For readers at home, look up the definition of deflection. Eh? You'll, find a, you'll find an interesting picture of me and my face that I'm making right now. <laughs> okay, so hang glider, basically. Yeah, Because yeah. it's like, again, I notice it's not exactly powered. Well, no. I needed the pedals for the Threegal 2B. That's, yes. the, that's the mountain bike one yeah. that doesn't yet have tires as such. Or a chain. Scotch tape. No. Oh, mm. My initial design had the scotch tape with sticky side on the inside. That was that was worse. Now, the sticky side's on the outside, which has its own problems. With the, with the smooth, plasticky side on the inside, you're not going to get a lot of friction. Yeah, so it's a it's an ongoing process. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the things usually are with you. And I apologize in advance. We might wind up with a Threegal 2B2. So yes. just be prepared for... You need work on your version control. You know, you have, like, final version and then final version 2. And then yes, final updated version final version. Yes, final version approved, fixed. Updated to... final. <laughs> Definitely the last one. I mean, a good spot. I think I can probably launch the, the, the three Eagle 2 and its three components pretty soon. Where are you going to launch them? Two. Into. Into the, the Memorial Duck Pond? No, I've been there. Yes. So... The, the, the Vlibraptors aren't there, but no. I know that there are areas of the library that I, that I haven't yet uh, discovered. Mm-hmm. Like, there's the whole area beyond the Grimoire Cage. I don't yes. like going near that because no, the, 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 the books yeah. jump up at the, uh, uh, at the cages of the speaking, bar. Speaking about Elder Gods, but yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Some of those books are blessed. 
<laughs> uh, dear readers at home, open your dictionary and look up euphemism, <laughs> and you'll see and you'll see K making this face that he's making right now. I'm thinking like I'm going to head in 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 that direction uh-huh. and maybe explore B deck. You've okay. mentioned that before, yes. and you've mentioned also that there's vending machines there, so who knows, maybe they use that as a food source. So, yes. So yeah. if I get complaints about someone trying to hack the vending machines and getting in through the coin slot, it'll be you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a fair cop. All right. So I'll, I'll report back in after I've successfully mended these vehicles and taken them beyond your cage of eldritch gods into the unknown world beyond. Well, the, the library beyond. Speaking of eldritch gods. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, we got there. Yes, the gods hate Kansas. Oh, yes, I've been looking forward to this for so long. After a hapless astronaut from Kansas commits an intergalactic faux pas, the offended alien race brings down the wrath of their elder gods that make Earth's great old ones pale by comparison. Yes, and the cover is so, so great, because you've got this this brainy, bug-eyed, like, squid... Uh, tentacle uh, thingy. Tentacle monster, and he sort of... He sort of looks sort of nonplussed. Yeah, it's like a little bit like, oh, what's this? And then, oh. like, gets zapped in the face by a blaster and... Uh, yeah, by a, by a, a fishbowl-helmeted space person. Yes, yeah. coming out of a little hatch on, on a, his On a ray gun shaped rocket ship. Yes. Okay, it's, like, it's so good. It is. It's like, it's also... Over some kind of spiky moon planet with a starscape beyond. It's so good. I also wonder why, like, there's win- there's windows in the engineering section, but, like, you see you see the big motor at the back and then you've got those oh, yeah. little side windows. No, and, that's... Yes, that's right. And then you've got this, like... Questionably aerodynamically designed base plane with this big <laughs> nuclear engine at the back. Which yeah. you think, like you know, if you've got that thing clinging to the back of your ship, then you can you climb be- out there and shoot it with your space pistol. But you could just also fire up the fire rocket. Fire the rocket. It seems much more of an efficient way to do this. Yeah, the, the the alien itself it looks a bit more more, more shocked, like like slightly off. Uh, that so might just be the Innsmouth look. <laughs> the Innsmouth look. Yes. Oh, we found the today's episode title. So <laughs> the Innsmouth look. Oh, nice. There we go. Uh, yeah, he's got a, he's got he's got big lips with with presumably big teeth behind them. But yeah, he's got sort of a a, a perturbed like. Like annoyed, like just nah, just why, nah. Why are you bruv. doing this? Yeah, nah, Mike, like, <laughs> nah. Which is kind of appropriate, but uh, to take our readers back to the book. So we start off with the celebratory launch of one of the the early faster than light interstellar rocket ships with the Kansasian, Kansasian, Kansanite, K- Kansanian. Yeah, Kansanite. Uh, yes, Kansanite. Let's go with Kansanite. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like a mineral, actually, Kansanite. Yes, the uh, the, the somewhat unfortunately named Roger Houston. <laughs> I don't understand. Like, this is even his his nickname, which is so confusing. Why would they accept a nickname that is so confusing? <laughs> on the radio, yeah. It's like... <laughs> because his, like, his real name on his mission placard mm-hmm. is the great name Emilio Earhart, yes. the, the distant descendant <laughs> of Amelia. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Emilio Roger Houston Earhart <laughs> is just a recipe for disaster. And, of course, disaster does indeed strike. Oh, yes. The five-year mission or the three-year mission or the two-and-a-half-year mission. I'm not really sure why they would send out a solo pilot on this. It's it's a bit Buck Rogerish, actually. I suppose. Yes, in but that regard, I, I, mm, uh, we may have talked about it before on the uh, on the episode. But I know that one of NASA's major research goals for figuring out how to get to Mars is how to get people traveling in an enclosed environment amid the nightmarishly anti-life environment of space without just killing each other. Ah, social dynamics. So it's basically to send out someone who's very soloistic and then uh, yeah, find yourself a solo traveler. But then the idea like, being on your own, you're less you know, likely to. Kill everyone. Including yourself, maybe. As long as you select people for being able to stand solitude very well. Yeah. So and there's, there's a lot of people who... Sounds like, who, reasonable. Who yeah. perfectly enjoy that. I mean, oh, not yeah. just, just introverts. I mean, also not just, just uh, uh, people on, on various aspects of the, the uh. neurodiverse spectrum, but just... Yeah, there are people for whom solitude just works, especially if you've still got a radio and you still message. Back oh well, on. yeah, of course, and like you know, you have like you increasing send, lag, you sure, send but messages. Whatever. Yeah, well, that's what email was for, invented for, you know. And so off he goes in his faster than light ship. It's still a bit of a journey because the the target that he's heading off to is still a hundred and forty some odd light years away. Mm-hmm. So even at a uh, hundred times light speed, it still takes him a while to get to Caos Australis, the binary star system, yeah. also known as Cosos. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so, yes, he, he makes it to the planet, uh, lands the ship, and it turns out that the said planet is uh, populated by a race of dog people. Yes. Now, I was very excited. I'm very much a dog person myself, well, as, as some people want to yeah. know, uh, which is a weird thing to say, having never owned one, because I'm also a very lazy person. Uh, you do have to walk them. Uh, yeah. I don't want to inflict my sedentary habits on, on, on a dog. A creature as wonderful and delightful well, as don't, a dog. Well, don't get one of the active breeds, but, you know, you get one of, don't you have, like, sleeper dogs? or something sleeper 
for dogs. I don't know, like like cats. I suppose. <laughs> you mean cats? Well, I guess that's what you'd. I don't know that you've got sleeper dogs. Have you, you've got yes, oh, super, the beagles, I suppose, are super lazy. Are they? I think so. No, beagles are hunting dogs, aren't they? Like but they're, but you, they're little... when you see them in movies and television series, they're always just kind of like. Slowly plodding along and flopping over and having a nap. Yeah, well, uh, we have a mutual friend out in out in Canada who mm-hmm. had a, a a greyhound who was just the laziest, sleaziest. <laughs> like so many videos of of him throwing like a ball or a treat at at said whippersnapper greyhound, and it just sort of bounces off of his <laughs> snout. <laughs> So I guess it, it it varies by by individual. I don't know. Maybe a, a corgi would that be a suitable? A corgi. Be suitable? I mean, well, if you're the queen, then yes. Yeah, the uh, uh, the excellent Twitter joke from uh, uh, from Zilla. Um, God creating corgis, uh, dictating to the angels, like, take a loaf of bread and put Give legs it, on it. Yeah, make done. it thick. Make it thick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> corgis are adorable dogs. So I kind of wonder what sort of dog people they are, because he doesn't recognize them immediately. No, I'm they're, they're can- can- canine-oid, I suppose. But yes, and this is where things start going a little bit weird, because he's not super trained for first contact. And no, the, I mean, the that kid, was never a plan. Yeah, so the dog play pool kind of like show their good intentions by doing like doing this little bow thing, which he interprets as like, they're oh, they're hailing me as God, as a yes, God. they're worshipping me. Yes, exactly. <laughs> he didn't know this behavior. And he'd also never been to, like, Japan. Also, Roger is, like, super allergic to dogs. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yes. That was Cause, a- causes him to sneeze. Which is like gets interpreted as him spitting on them, which is like like super insulting, and that's on the uh, yeah they're they're off to a bad start <laughs> because like he even sneezes like inside of his fishbowl helmet, so after this he can't really see anymore. <laughs> yes, uh, and there's no there's no wipers on the inside. How he managed to have this reaction with his with a fishbowl helmet little, on still a bit of bumbling around because you can't see a thing. Uh, dogs are forgiving creatures, you mm-hmm. know. It, it's hard for them to hold a grudge, so they do still kind of embrace him. Okay, here's right. a, here's a stranger with his strange way and they uh, uh, figure out what atmosphere he needs and they light a few oxygen candles to increase the O2 content of the atmosphere around here and then he can take off his helmet and actually see again. Yeah. All of which I thought was immensely considerate. Like, I like that there's such a thing as an oxygen candle. You know, apparently that's a real thing. Yeah, yeah. Used on the ISS for uh, emergency backup if the regular oxygen generators fail. What? what? Are they, though? Like, they're called candles, so I imagine, like... Yeah, I think it's a booster pack or something that you have to pull open and... Uh, yeah, I imagine sort of like a tin can with just like a... a yeah, because and it's, it's a solid... And it creates, object. yeah, there's basically a chemical reaction that... That just produces, sort of evaporates. Produces, ...produces oxygen. The biggest problem would also be uh, scrubbing the CO2, which is... Of course. ...even more important than, like, getting enough oxygen in there. Yeah, I sort of wonder about that sometimes. Like, we can survive pretty high air pressure, right? Yeah. So if we're in an environment where there's regular air at one atmosphere, yeah. okay, and we breathe normally, so we're producing a lot of carbon dioxide. We're yeah. very sensitive to carbon dioxide. Mm-hmm. But we're sensitive to the carbon dioxide proportion. If we continually pump in more oxygen without pumping anything out, yes. right, at a rate higher or equal to the rate at which we're no, exhaling, get, uh, uh, so the pressure increases yeah. gradually, so we can tolerate it. I, I don't yeah. know what the limits are, but they're pretty high. Oh, no, the pressure is, I think you would uh, get problems with oxygen narcosis first, because uh, the, at, well, at certain point the partial pressure of oxygen becomes so high that it, ah. it, i think it, uh, that it turns poisonous or so, something starts going horribly wrong well what if you that's do why the, the, that's why the inert gas well that's what helium that's the, what yeah, oxy, yeah, yeah. oxyhelium mixes are for oh yes for uh, for, yeah. for, for deep diving yeah and absolutely how deep do you have to go before you need helium in your oxygen usually 40 meters is about the limit at which you have to stop breathing uh, nitrogen oxygen mixtures oh, because then the, the partial pressure to... of the nitrogen starts becoming a problem you get nitrogen right. narcosis and it all goes horribly wrong with uh, humans and that's why you mix in helium because you... Because helium's fine. doesn't helium, do anything. Helium's inert. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't do anything. So you, it just makes sure that you dilute the gas. Because, the, again, the thing is, like, when you have a high pressure, like, there's plenty of oxygen in your lungs. It's just, like, more molecules in your lungs. I mean, does then the helium actually make it through the alveoli membrane of your lungs and into your blood? Does it... Uh, you, you, you probably get some just helium dissolved in your blood, but oxygen is transported through getting grabbed by the hemoglobin. It's not just the oxygen dissolved no, of course, in your of blood. Course. And then the, yeah. the hemoglobin transfers it to... Uh, Let's okay. not go... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I space launched my pen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what a mistake to make. So I think with all of that, uh, I, won't, uh, I won't be writing any impromptu notes this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and I think that Roger Houston probably suffered a bit more from the the obscure gas combinations than and then he was able to let on, and then the the the, the dog people of Cosos were able to anticipate. So when they introduced themselves to him, rather confusingly as Bruce, 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 and Bruce, he addresses Bruce and he calls him Bruce, which is just the oh, worst. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, it was bad enough that he sneezed in their in their presence and continues to do so. But yes, he's committed the the unforgivable sin um, and is invited misnaming to depart. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I can I can sort of understand it from the the perspective of the, the 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 dog people. They've just they've just had enough. Like if this is what alien first contact is like, no thank you. Get lost. But they're also that's the other thing with dogs. They're they're forgiving. They're also vindictive. Uh, they'll, they'll shit in your shoe, you know. Yeah. This is more of a like. I guess metaphysical shit. Like, <laughs> yes. When they go and talk to, to their elder gods. Uh, yeah, they're, uh, uh, they're, they're doggy shaman who had the, the, the really cool robes and covered in bones, which he was very oh. often distracted with. So it's even a lot harder with the fine altar boys chewing on the hems of his robes. Yes. You know, it's well, just like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no. Yeah, that's, for the, that's for the gods, not for you. <laughs> yeah. It's like only after the gods have had the essence of the bones, then you're allowed to have the actual yes, bones. Yes, yes, that's right. Oh, I do love transmutation. It's such a, it's <laughs> Such a cool concept, especially when it actually leaves over some arms for the less fortunate. So the shaman sort of priest kicking the uh, the, the nibbling little altar pups aside. Yes, <laughs> an adorable scene. <laughs> an adorable scene. Especially how it's played off as like this always happens. Like, always happens because yeah, the the, the little creep. Okay, this is going to be narrow casting, but it's a, it's a story that I, I just love so much and have to share. Altar boys. Okay, in Dutch, oh. there is a there is a mm-hmm. word. Kvibus, a weird kvibus, yeah. right? And that's a strange guy, strange. Yeah, yeah. A, a, a lanky weirdo is what it yeah. means. And I discovered a while back, I learned in university where that word comes from, and oh, it comes from tell. a particular Catholic church in Rotterdam, where early in the twentieth century, the the uh, the mass was still done in Latin. Oh, still. Uh, Facing the altar rather than the uh, all of that, uh, oh, all of yeah. that, and so the, the the largely working class Catholic audience would have no idea what was going. It was yeah. just all divine mystery to them. But they did notice that at predictable points in the in the oft repeated mass, mm-hmm. the the priest would nod at the altar boy, always a lanky like fourteen year old boy who's all elbows and knees. Yeah. And it would usually be around the word. Kvibus. Now, I don't fully remember the phrase, but in yeah. Latin, like, kvibus, I think it means, like, for whom or from whom. Right. Uh, but they'd see him nod to that weirdo altar boy at that point. Uh, yeah, you know what? The, the kid, the kid, the kvibus. kvibus. You yeah, know yeah. what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I had no idea. That Isn't sounds that awesome? amazing, yeah. So I wonder if the dog people have the, the same sort of thing as the, as, the, as the shaman priest follows Roger Houston up to his ship, the SS Dorothy Gale, yes. uh, and, and ceremonially curses it as it's departing which normally like is just kind of a ceremonial thing and doesn't really do anything but they're kind of taken aback by the fact that now that they're cursing something that's actually traveling into space the elder gods boy howdy do they respond because oh, now yes. we can finally fucking do something yes and the elder creatures who were snoozing around their planet sort of cthulhu like waiting for something to happen waiting to be summoned and and for a craft yes, to actually someone enter their finally domain. to say beetlejuice 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 and like you <laughs> know being mirror, a good yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like the first of the creatures in the deep regions of space, the great old ones around around Kozos appears, uh, and Meshuggah gives chase. <laughs> the great Meshuggah, that's like... <laughs> gets a little bit, uh, a gets a little multi- bit confused, <laughs> a- accidentally takes out a few of the canine spaceships, uh, yeah, f- until yeah, he finally latches onto the right one, in which I think it leads to the scene we see on the cover of the book. Uh, yeah. It explains, well, it explains the expression that we see on his face. <laughs> what, like, <laughs> what is this? Why was I awoken from slumber? for this bullshit and then Roger Houston comes out and space lasers him in the transparent brain dome and hightails it back to Earth because it'll be faster to actually physically go back to Earth rather than like radio them definitely mm. but he has more to deal with because he may have disabled Meshuggah who was not expecting a laser to the brain but uh, Meshuggah's ancient and evil cousin Chutzpah soon gives chase uh, now well, more he's, easily he's, he's, he's a bit of a um, spunky the, one who, who dodges the lasers and of course at this point Roger Houston finally realizes what he should have done which is to fire up the old rocket. Yeah, burn them off and back to Earth. Like, oh my back God, like Earth. the canine people, they're hostile. They, I don't know what happened, but they suddenly turned evil on us. Like, they, there must be a rabbit or something. <laughs> yeah. That, like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, not realizing that he's still being chased by, by great old ones from the dog people. Uh, this time it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a trio of the gods Legendemain, Je ne sais quoi, and Obey Marie, who... <laughs> 
Yeah, these names were were so wild and imaginative. I, th- I, I really impressed with Joseph Millard's Millard's name. So uh, much like the much like the Threegal is a three component craft. This is a hmm. three component god. Especially Ledger Domain is very good at like keeping his moves secret. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he managed like, to, to he, telepathically futz the control so he can't fire the plasma blast from his rockets. Uh, yeah, Roger Houston coming back in, into Earth, and they get like very little warning on the elder gods who are uh, hot on his plasma trail. I suppose. Uh, fortunately, he comes in hot enough that these these, these these three gods burn up in uh, uh, in reentry. Obama re ends up in the water, and uh, <laughs> yeah. well, I think it was described as the biggest crawfish boil that New England has ever seen <laughs> yeah, uh, when he lands off the coast of uh, Boston. Boston, yes, <laughs> that's right. One of the elder gods has sort of infiltrated his his engine. That's far from Nugent. <laughs> Yeah, he, he was wondering, like, it was such a smooth ride. <laughs> yes. Was, and so like, economical as and well. Like, but, yes, it turns out that uh, the Elder Gods, like, I mean, I maybe mean, think Innsmouth is quite close to Boston. Is it? It's like New England. It's Is it? Oh, yeah, it would be, wouldn't it? It is, yes. Yeah, it's all, so it's all New it's England somewhere up, somewhere up there. I was thinking Plymouth. Plim- yeah, oh, also, is that also New England? Oh, Plymouth is Washington, isn't it? Well, I know that the Puritanical pioneers, they, they had Plymouth Rock yes. navigated out, and then they were accidentally waylaid and had to stop somewhere because of very inclement weather, and then they called that Plymouth Rock. They just redrew their map, Oh, uh, as far as I'm aware, and they just gave up on their original location. Yeah, so it's, it's a bit of like the Russian space program. You, like you, shoot and, <laughs> yes. you shoot first, and whatever you hit, you call the target. Yeah, you give the press release later. Like yeah. you, you send up the, uh, oh, they had the uh, the Venusian probes. Yeah, I think if, they're still the only space program that sent probes to, to Venus. And they sent their first yeah. lander, which burned up in atmosphere, and then they called it a... Atmospheric probe. Atmospheric yeah, yeah. sampler. Well, yeah. same, with, same with rockets. Like, you know, if the, like, if the launch goes up and then comes down again and doesn't achieve orbit, you call it a successful suborbital test. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they actually did land on Venus, though. Yeah, yeah they did. They uh, built a whole craft that they knew would survive at max like an hour on that. I don't think they knew exactly what the conditions were that they were dealing with this, but there are a f- only a few photos, and yes, the lander did not survive for very long. Because, oh. boy, howdy, is that yeah, a Venusian atmosphere aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's too hot for most electronics to run properly. It's like corrosive. Acidic. It's, There's yeah. like the, the pH value of the atmosphere. It's it, the, the pressure is incredible. Yeah. It's like the pressure cooker from hell. And which is what the elder gods like like Favagnugan and his ancient parasite Tepanyaki want to turn Earth into. Yeah, these these mysterious foreign words. They, they sound so exotic. Yeah, I mean, I think Tepanyaki goes back to the whole crawfish ball that we were talking about earlier, yeah. but it's more of a hot plate affair. He wants to make the, the, yeah. the Earth entirely sizzling and, yeah. So, yes, Cthulhu himself gets woken by the splashdown of uh, Bemarine. Yes, uh, our own ancient elder god, described by like, H.P. Lovecraft. Yeah, they don't really enjoy being, like, they, they, they are terrible. I mean, this is our world to fuck up. He kind of wakes from his slumber and he... They say fuck up, but they're all just sleeping and they left some ruins around for... The bugs to live in, yes. Cthulhu kicks out, gives Haster a kick in the butt, who happens to be the Lord of Interstellar Spaces. Oh, see... I thought that I remembered Hastur from uh, Good Omens. The name is used there as well, but he's oh, also one okay. of the Cthulhu and uh, uh, Cthulhu gods. And he's uh, from the interstellar spaces. So he's, the, he's, one the, of, he's the Lord of Interstellar Spaces. I think so. I think, I think he got a pretty good shake when the the the, the various domains were handed out to yeah. the, the the Eldritch gods because the universe is mostly it's mostly space. The original reference was more to like you know the space between dimensions and stuff like that, that kind of interstellar, and not necessarily oh, outer space. Oh, okay. But still, it's it's close enough to be a. Uh, I mean, even a, with the metric expansion passion. of the universe, that just means that he gets more and nobody more else powerful. gets more. But yes, he managed to get um, uh, some human scientists like just mad enough to follow him. Ah, uh, yes, because despite being immensely powerful, they still need people to do their uh, work. And they uh, get from creating a new starship, the Alien Interdictor, Ooh, which is yeah. called the Divine Hammer. <laughs> Yeah, so the the alien interdictor, uh, uh, divine hammer is is launched, but uh, and this is something that I of, often have trouble with. Like, I don't love the idea of heroism as a purely destructive force. Mm-hmm. Like, that is the the old classical mode, and that's certainly something you expect from uh, the gods hate Kansas with a, a, a ray gun shaped spaceship. Mm-hmm. You expect the destructive mode of heroism, where the, the goal is to destroy something uh, evil, like the early Star yes. Wars films until. Uh, uh, the Last Jedi. Yeah, it turns uh, out like yeah, redemption is more of a theme there. Yeah, and in fact, perhaps 
always has been. But also the sort of Marvel Avengers mode of a uh, super hell wizard yes. versus the DC one where, you know, in the Man of Steel, Metropolis is under attack and, I mean, for various good reasons, but Superman's response is to abandon Metropolis and go to the other side of the world to destroy something that needs destroying more. Whereas, like, in the Avengers, half the team is busy just helping civilians out of the, uh, yeah, the kill zone. To, to, to try, try to save as much of Manhattan and the people. Uh, yeah, totally. And so I appreciate it that, that Roger Houston, in his years of solitude and his his ill-fated encounter with, with other people, realizes that the Divine Hammer is maybe not the, the correct solution, but that since everything started with, with his failure to adhere to etiquette that he didn't know, uh, his failure to ask, to, 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 to learn, yeah. to, to, to understand, he decides to use the, the recently built uh, FTL transmitter, powered by the Divine Hammer, to transmit to the dog people the Manual of Etiquette by Emily Post. She um, she one of the acne aunts? A uh, kind of. I don't know that she did. She did magazines, but she she wrote about about etiquette. Ah, yes. and you'd imagine that she was a stuck up person, mm-hmm. right? Because she she wrote out about like how do you do a good uh, like a good dinner party? And yes. all, but all of these were immensely practical rules. Always about making sure that people are having a good time and not about inflicting shame. Yes. She was once asked, "Would you eat donuts at a picnic? Because donuts are a kind of a vulgar food. You have uh-huh. to eat them with your okay. fingers, and they and they yeah. get dirty." And she's like, "Yeah, go nuts. It's a picnic. Someone brought you've, them. You've got yeah. napkins." Yeah. Yeah. Just eat them, you weirdo. Yeah, the famous story with the, uh, with, I think it was Queen Victoria or one of the, uh, one of the ones with, oh, with yes. the finger bowl. Uh, yes, the like finger bowl with lemon water. One of the guests picking up the bowl, drink from it, and like doesn't bat an eyelid and picks up her own and does it as well, just to make sure that nobody is going to ever speak badly yeah. of it. And even in modern, more modern times, the, the the Great Bitch Bake Off or something like that, if a uh, oh, if that a partic- wonderful cooking like uh, contest yeah, program. Yes, yeah. if, if a if a particular uh, contestant has a, a a big meltdown, then uh, one of the hosts have the habit of starting to use uh, language which was like incorrect uh, which we oh, couldn't yes. be so that those Profanity. shots yeah prof- so that those shots couldn't be used on yes. live uh, stand in front uh, in of the them exactly so it would be edited out and could never be used on it oh it's such exactly. a it's such a kind thing to do he ends up heading back to the dog planet yeah I think Kozos, that's what yeah Kozos. Uh, and that's what it turns out that, like, the divine hammer, it's like not more, no such hammer, but more mace shaped. <laughs> and dogs are like, are like ball! <laughs> <laughs> yes! They're, they're absolutely delighted. They take the Emily Post Manual of Etiquette as their new divine text. And uh, yeah, rather than turning it into a god versus god battle, it becomes more of a dog versus human uh, relationships. Yes, resulting in the Bruce Truce. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> presided over by their queen Sheila and oh. yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes that was quite nice all's well that ends well and what a what a charming like i would love it if our our very first alien contact is with is with is with dog people, people. with whom we can relate because that's why like I, I, I believe the whole reason that our ancestors domesticated dogs mm-hmm. and we 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 get on with dogs is because by pure coincidence wolves and humans can read each other's body language yeah like it's harder with cats. You can learn. Yeah, but it's not as it's, of, it's not as intuitive. Yeah, no, Dogs, cats sort of domesticated themselves. Like yeah, they moved like, into the grain stores. Yeah, it's like to, oh, there's lots do of, Yeah, let's let's see if we can like get in on this action. Whereas dogs were like courted almost. And, yeah, and, tempted and, the, and then like yeah, positive reinforcement and breeding of the ones with uh, with agreeable traits. I've had the very great privilege of meeting wolves and like and like I've had wolf puppy kisses. Oh. And they're they're just very sweet. And there was even oh, so it was a it was a preserve or it was a conservatory organization in in California, and they had a few like. Full-blooded wolf pups and a few, like, 95% wolf wolf mm-hmm. mix adults who sort of took protective roles. So we were out on the range and it was a photo shoot and we were doing filming uh, and just getting some, some, some footage of these. And so the, the wolf pups were having fun going out on the, on the mesas and the, and the mountains. Mm-hmm. And the adults, which were like 5% German Shepherd, yeah. would conspicuously position themselves between wherever the pups were playing and us. Ah. Just, yeah, just looking out for them, which was, yeah. was kind of cool. But whenever we got like too close, one of them would make this weird <laughs> noise. Trying to like, bark, which they can't. Yes, yes. He had the German Shepherd guard bark, bark, but he couldn't produce a bark with his wolf throat. Uh-huh. <laughs> it just that's sounded a, so cranky. That, Get off my lawn. That's adorable. <laughs> it's really cute. Yeah. So, like, the thing with between dogs and wolves is, and I, I know that was like they they discovered this with uh, uh, Russian foxes, right? where they were just like breeding them for fur. Oh, domestic. Yeah. Yeah. And they they started like, okay, we're we're just going to make it easy on ourselves, and we're going to breed for 
uh, for personality. So we we just want yeah. the timid and the friendly ones, and we're just not going to breed the, the the mean and nasty ones. And within three to five generations, they suddenly started getting curly tails. They started getting white chest oh, plus blaze. blazes, blazes, yeah. and just like these typical dog traits started developing in foxes when they were purely being bred for their character and not for their yeah. appearance. Which was yeah, it's, it's interesting that those between are these those personality traits or, yeah. and traits we would call uh, domestic dog traits. But the white blaze, I mean, it goes further than dogs. Like domesticate, obviously, all horses mm. are are domesticated or formerly domesticated, except perhaps the Przewalski and Konik horses. Yeah. Although one of them was like reconstructed, but whatever. Like I, uh, I think I think the white blaze on like the chest or the forehead is a specific domestication dom- trait, trait for for yeah. domestication yeah. among multiple species yeah, of yeah. animals. As far yeah, as very sure. Yeah. Oh. With the Bruce Truce in place, contact is established between humanity and, and Kozos or Kos. Relati- or relationships the, are normalized. And in return, the uh, the Kozosians, uh, the dog people, send over their manual of, of etiquette, which the, the, the humans sort of politely decline because it does involve a lot of butt sniffing. I mean, they also like, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, the elder gods are put back to sleep again on both sides. It's like the nuclear detente stand down, whereas the, uh, <laughs> yeah. everybody puts their gods back to sleep and uh, peaceful relationships <laughs> yeah. uh, are commenced between the two. And we and we finish uh, with Emilio Earhart, Roger Houston, finding that he's, despite his allergies, much more at home among the among the dog people. No, I mean, you can take pills for that, you know, it's like exactly. just like one little pill a day and you're fine. And we see him as a as a as an acolyte with uh, with little altar pups sort uh-huh. of nibbling. Yeah. At the, at the hems of his, oh, his robes. Yes. And, uh, way to go, Joseph Millard. So, hey, Kay, did you yes. like it? I liked it. Very, very good characterization, not just from the humans and the dogs, but also the elder gods, how they're shown to have their, their little personality quirks, which are more than just kill and maim everything and like make people yeah. go mad. Yeah, I mean, that's a symptom of their sort of personalities, but ultimately, yeah. like, they're, they, they still have their individual maybe traits. Maybe the elder gods are like basically cats. Oh, well, they're a little bit okay. Quirky, so even for cat standards, I've met numerous dogs, and, and I've seen them like deal with children who mm-hmm. are significantly smaller than them, and, yeah. and, and babies. And I'm convinced that if that dog was ten times bigger, yeah. that we could still be friends. Oh, right. Well, I have my personal theory is that dogs have, don't have no concept of their size. Right. Like, the, like you, you can have a Chihuahua who will not stand down from a Danish dog, and a Danish dog who will be like intimidated by a kitten. And I think that on, on some level they still think they are just wolf sized or whatever. And yeah. it's like wolf is pretty big. Yeah, I know, yeah, but yeah, yeah the, they have no concept of how big they actually themselves are versus cats i've met like i've i've been very good friends with a lot of cats obviously with a little librarianess if she was 10 times bigger yeah our relationship there would, would be, be like different. a lot more serious demands for wet food yes yeah <laughs> so do you see my parallel between the no, the, the dog that. people and the and the eldritch alien gods like yeah. just the fact that they are that size means that they have just a different relationship with yeah. the people who inhabit the planets around which they slumber that's also the thing with cats they want to like their Slumber. favorite place to sleep is to snooze quite near you, slightly out of arm's reach. Yeah, and unless the thermostat is turned down and they want to leech off heat, but that's you <laughs> yes, know. Oh, Gepard, how I how I miss you. He's the uh, the Sphinx cat by our ah, beautiful yes. friend in Moscow. And boy, howdy, it gets cold out there. Very affectionate, He's immensely <laughs> like, affectionate. Yeah, like hi, you're warm. You have a sweater I can claw, crawl underneath. <laughs> yes, that's what he loved to do. <laughs> just get right up against your tummy under the sweater and just purr, 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 purr. Oh. Uh, I mean, he did look like an eldritch elder god. That's, a fairly, gener- that's a fairly generous uh, description of a sphinx cat. But so how are we going to rate this book? Well, um, we're talking about cosmic distances. Like, there's like four point something light years to a parsec. Actually less. So it's 143 light years to Caos Australis, and that's yeah. 44 parsecs. Oh, okay. Come from my so it's, it's a little more than three. Oh, I did the math on that. Very good. Well, th- there was the the the. Uh, do you remember how there was the appendix that sort of read like a Wikipedia article? Oh about, no, I, I must have skipped that. About a, a star that happened to have the world Australis, where the Bruce Truce joke would work. Did, yeah, yeah. did you not notice that? Oh, maybe that was no. just author's notes that I happened to see. Yeah, in my I version. guess I, I tend to not not always read the extra pages no, after I've the story. I've been exploring the library in the in the in the three equal to a b and a and c. So yeah. maybe I just found uh, you've it. covered covered a lot more distance than I do, <laughs> usually do on my regular commute. So uh, out of 143 light years, yeah, yeah, let's let's do that. Yeah, okay, I would give it a good dog star. Oh, oh, do we have that? What's it called? I mean, Canis Major, is that, yes. is that the one? No, Sirius. Sirius is the dog star. Yes. 
Which is weird because you have Canis. Uh, I think Canis is Canis Canis Major, Major, Canis Major, that's Major that's the, those are constellations. Yes. And then, oh, maybe Sirius, the Sirius is, is in probably one in one of them. I'm not that up on my astronomy. Anytime that I say the word astronomy, I have to pause and, and make say, sure. Like, don't he say didn't say astrology. astrology. Don't yes. say astrology. <laughs> don't say astrology. <laughs> because if, you know, if you're speaking to someone to whom you say the word astronomy, they will probably correct you if you say it wrong. Yes. So where did we land on? I liked it. It was a good book. <laughs> I did too. And so I'm very glad that we got to review it. And speaking of reviews, please leave a review of our plucky little podcast on your service of choice. And hey, here's something fun. Pick an episode you haven't listened to and just imagine what it's about. <laughs> that would be very much in the spirit it's of It's kind our, of on brand. Uh, I can't believe we haven't asked that before. Yeah. Please pick an episode you have not listened to, to to review. We'd very much like to see it. And if you do, please let us know. Uh, uh, we're, you can find us at CoverMyAssCast on Twitter.com. Why did I say Twitter.com? You can find us at CoverMyAssCast at Twitter and at CoverMyAssCast.com. And what do we have in store for our readers next week when hopefully we do this post-ramble better? Ooh, yeah. Next week's book is by Nick Flynn. Another bullshit night in Suck City. <laughs> Thank you for joining us at Cover Mask, where baffling books are reviewed but not read by yours truly. My name is Kat and I'm Kay, and remember, we, we only, only judge, judge a book, book by, by its, its cover. cover. <laughs> oh, I, could really, I could really go for some tapping now. Look, I've been staring at that, at that <laughs> note on the amazing.